I'm off camera here a little bit, but I thought the more important subject matter was not me, but the equipment sitting in front of me here. I recently did a blog uh, post on my website, which uh, you can find in the link below, just about my experience with shooting some film cameras. Um, you know, I just kind of wanted to touch on this subject because I think we get so consumed with the latest and greatest technology that's being released year after year, and I think like we're chasing after the next great camera all the time, and I question that sometimes because I feel like really what we should be doing is concentrating on producing good imagery. And even though the newest and greatest cameras that are coming out every year are wonderful to use, they're not going to make you produce better pictures. The only thing that's going to make you produce better pictures, in my opinion, is honing your skills. And a great way to do that is shooting film. Um, now, I did a blog post. I was using my Mamiya RZ67. Uh, this is not the Pro 2. This is just the uh, RZ67. And I have the 110 on here, but I also have the 150 and the... Um, the 50 millimeter for uh, landscape shots. Great lenses. It can be had pretty cheap. The 110 is a little more expensive because it's their normal lens and it's very popular. But again, I have that camera sitting here and I also have a beautiful, let me slide this out of the way. I also have a beautiful Canon F1 New. This thing is a workhorse, and this is a solid, solid piece of gear here. You can actually see some of the brassing coming through um, the metal top plate here. I just love it. It's just got such a vintage feel. It's a solid camera. And, uh, you know, the baby brother to this is the Canon AE-1. And this is a very special camera to me. This was my father's camera, and uh, he passed that on to me. And... Uh, the first pictures I actually took of this camera, that I took with this camera as an adult, were of my daughter. So it's got sentimental values. I mean, the battery cover's all broken on it and everything, but I love this camera. But the point being is, I did a blog post. I shot the Canon F1, and I used uh, some Ilford HP5, which I pushed to 800. And then I shot the uh, big monster here, the Mamiya 6.7. And I shot um, Triax, and I also shot uh, Fuji H, uh, sorry, Fuji uh, 160 on this. You can see those images. I'll post a few of them up here on this website, uh, on this, um, on this video as well as uh, they're on my website right now under the uh, the blog post. But the point being is, I don't want us to get so caught up in in the latest and greatest technology. I think sometimes you got to get back to your roots and the best way to do that is with film cameras. I feel for me, if you try to shoot some film, it's going to give you the hard truth about your photography and about your skills. Uh, you really have to slow down. You really have to take your time. You have to really think about what you're doing. Uh, every shot costs you money. Um, if you mess it up, there's really no saving it. Uh, there's no, uh, you know, fixing it in Photoshop. Uh, yeah, you could probably tweak your scans a little bit, but that's not what it's about. What it's about is really understanding composition, learning how to really expose correctly, uh, learning how to save your highlights and recover some of your shadows, uh, making sure things don't get too, uh, you know, muddy in the, in the dark areas and you don't overexpose your highlights. And it's a real, really good, strong lesson um, that everybody really could use. You can pick these film cameras up nowadays pretty cheap. You know, with the resurgence of film, they're getting a little bit higher on the price. But um, there's still great deals to be had. I found this Canon, I believe I found this Canon for like $200 at the time. Uh, these were well, 
I believe a thousand dollars at the time when they were um, being released back in the 80s but when I got it some of the shutter times were off so I had to send it out for a CLA clean, uh, clean lube and adjust it came back and this thing is like a tank it works perfect um, this one could probably use a nice CLA but I haven't sent it out yet because I've been spending a lot of time with the F1 but another wonderful camera these things you can find these things fifty sixty dollars sometimes a hundred with a lens sometimes even cheaper with a lens it all really depends on um, you know if you strike it or not uh, the RZ could be a little bit more expensive uh, four to five hundred dollars sometimes just the body or if you get a lens combo it could be a little bit more um, great camera as well medium format you're really only going to get 10 shots on this with these you can get 24 or 36 depending on the roll that you're using um, but again it does cost money but the initial investment is very cheap to get into and the lesson that it will teach you is priceless uh, if you get back to your roots and you learn how to shoot some film, um, you're going to learn a lot about light, about shadows, recovery, about highlights. You, you're just really going to learn a lot about your photography and you're going to hone your skills a lot more. Um, in addition to purchasing a 35mm or a medium format, I would suggest you purchase a light meter. Uh, you don't have to get this one. This is a little bit higher. This is an L758 by Sekonic. Um, these do have light meters in them, and they can be trusted. The, um, this does not have a light meter in it. The uh, Mamiya has no light meter unless you get the uh, different um, viewfinder for it. But with that being said, purchase a light meter. You can get these... Um, about a hundred dollars not this one but you can get some of the Sekonics for about a hundred and fifty to two hundred uh, this one cost me a little bit more money but the reason why is because this has a spot meter as well as a lumosphere so when I want to expose for landscape uh, doing landscape shots I can expose for the uh, shadows and highlights and also the midtones and average it out um, and this is great also having a lumosphere for you know um, taking readings uh, right where you know you're going to be photographing and actually get the proper light but this is a worthwhile investment as well it's going to teach you a lot um, yeah get back to the basics like I said I don't I don't want to be redundant here and I don't want to drag this on but again these are great cameras to get um, they don't have to be Canons you can find Nikon Pentax Olympus whatever you can get your hands on. Um, I also have a Nikon F3 which is the direct competition probably to the F1 and it also has a lot of great uh, attributes. Uh, these like I said these are a dime a dozen you could probably find uh, a Nikon equivalent um, and you can also definitely find a Pentax K1000 which is probably uh, which is kind of like the student camera almost the same as this and uh, you know that's a great camera to buy as well um, you're a little limited on these uh, this one only goes up to one one thousandth of a second this one goes up to one two thousandth of a second and this one only goes up to let me move this uh, Mamiya in frame again this one only goes to one four hundredth of a second so Shooting wide open um, can be difficult if you're into bokeh and you're trying to get that shallow depth of field. Um, it's not what it's about. It's about capturing a properly exposed image and properly composed and framed and, uh, you know, really just learning a lot about yourself. It will give you the hard truth about your skills if you shoot some medium format. This back here, by the way, is a cable release, which actually goes to the side of this lens because this is a leaf shutter this is a leaf shutter camera and not a focal plane so if you want to mirror up this to reduce camera shake while it's on a tripod you can cock it flip focus click the mirror up and then activate the shutter which is in the lens with the uh, cable release you can also use a cable release on these cameras as well. I don't want to hit this one that has film in it. 
um, but right at the top on either one of these. Again, uh, $12 item, I believe. Not a lot of money. But take your time. Shoot film. Experiment. Um, it's not about blowing off 100 images. It's about taking your time and exposing a roll and just really learning a lot about your photography. But anyway, I'm going on and on here. I tend to do that. I apologize. If you like what you see here today um, and want to see more of my videos, please check out my YouTube page and uh, subscribe to it. I'm going to be coming out with more videos on uh, you know, more topics. Uh, anything from high-end DSLRs, uh, medium format I shoot a lot of, and also obviously film uh, I'm very passionate about. And uh, you can subscribe to that link. You can check out my website again at josephdagostinophotography.com. I'll have a link down below on that as well. And also check out my Instagram page at josephdagostinophoto, uh, which is my name on Instagram. And I, I take pictures every day. I believe in that. Um, I'm constantly clicking the button. But I'll tell you guys, there is nothing like getting a film scan back from the lab and seeing your images on film. The richness, the organic feeling of film, uh, the sharpness, but with just the right amount of grain. And I'm talking about film grain. I'm not talking about ISO noise digitally, you know, imprinted on your images because of the way the sensor readout is. I'm talking about organic film grain, and it is gorgeous. And for me, personally, the emotional response that I feel when I get a scan back of a properly exposed image that I took, that I properly read the light and the shadow and I composed correctly, is just so much more personal for me than a digital rendition of that same image. Um, sometimes I'll shoot an image and then I'll copy it on uh, film. And, you know, it's amazing. I got these scans back of my daughter, which I'll put up, and my wife. And, uh, man, the first time I saw them pop up on the screen, and I was like, oh, my God, yes, I nailed it. I, I hit it. It's pro properly exposed. It's focused. It's just such a good feeling, and it's a really good feeling of accomplishment. And if you guys aren't doing it, you guys are missing out on a whole nother experience of photography that you guys really should partake in. So again, I just stress that. Get these get these cameras. They're out there. Um, you know, it's almost like time has forgotten them. There's, there's a resurgence now, like I said, in shooting film, and it's becoming more popular, but the deals are out there, and like I said, for not a lot of money, you can really invest in, in a great little system and uh, really enjoy yourself and learn a lot about your photography. All right, guys, I gave you all the links before, and again, I just want to thank you for taking the time and, and checking out my video here, and uh, check out the, the site for more. Thanks, guys.